Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. A lot of people are asking me about the whole interview. Uh, not, I have never heard of this lady before, uh, Dr. Cheyenne Bryant. I hadn't, I wasn't familiar with her work um, until the two viral clips of her. One of her and Nick Cannon, and her talking about Nick Cannon and his child, his baggage and situations, and then her basically co uh, clocking Cam Newton's tea. So I ended up watching the full Cam Newton interview, which is almost two hours, and it was a really good interview. Really good interview, um, but it left me really disliking Cam Newton, like, even more. And, you know, I've been a fan of his, like, when he was in sports, I was a fan. Um, I'm not a big fan of his podcast. I've watched, like, a few episodes of his podcast. It's okay. Um, you know, he's kind of over the top with his dressing style, but that's a whole nother video. But um, she really hit on some good points, and you could tell he was definitely feeling away. Um, also with the Nick Cannon interview, she hit on a lot of good points as well. And so I want to go ahead and talk about that. So let me just go ahead and clip some stuff on my screen here. Give me just a second. Make sure I have everything up. Okay. So if you guys have not watched the full interview, it is really, really good. Um, like I said, it's about two and a half hours, but I just, I enjoyed, um, how down the earth she was, how articulate she was. And she's made a lot of points that I've made on my channel over the years, especially concerning Nick Cannon. I didn't know that Cam Newton had all them kids, okay? I thought he had maybe three or four. I didn't realize he was up to baby baby number eight, which is insane. But um, she really got on some real topics that are affecting the black community and broken homes. You know, I've said this time and time again about men like Nick Cannon. I don't give a damn how much money these men have. That is not the same as being in the household and waking up with those children, putting them to bed at night, taking care of them, being there for them. That is different. And it's too many people out here creating broken homes, okay? And so that was one of the things that she was like really taking time out to address that I respected. So let's start with the Nick Cannon clip here, and then we'll go into the... Uh, into the Cam Newton. All right, all right. Let's do this one. All right, so let's go ahead and listen to Nick Cannon. I have dealt with some people that balance me and are equally yoked. And at times, have I been manipulative and prey on certain yeah, things? Yeah, That's because yeah. I'm a man. Right. And, mm, but and, not all men do that. We don't want to. We don't want to blanket all men. All men, men. And all I will men take do advantage. not pray will, and manipulate. Not all men. First of all, all humans pray and manipulate. But in a man not in a relationship, in a praying way. Not see, in a praying if way. If I see that, I can say, okay. I feel like I need this and this person has this. I'm going to do and say whatever I need to do to get that. But, so that is very disturbing because this is a man who is the host of a show called Wildin' Out with a bunch of young, beautiful women. So you're basically telling us that you pray. And if somebody has something that you want, money, pussy, whatever, you're going to pray on that person till you get what you get. If another hood rat ends up pregnant by Nick Cannon, you get what you get because he is telling you verbatim that he prays on people, he prays on women, that is, that's what he does. So for somebody to turn around and be the 12th day mama, I don't wanna see no tattoo tears, don't be on the shade room going back and forth with nobody, uh, deal with your pregnancy in silence and leave us the fuck up out the group chat, okay? Because he's letting you know that that is his MO. He likes to prey on women. Do it as a weirdo. But, Nick. So, therefore, I have dealt with some people that balance me and are equally yoked. And at times, have I been manipulative and prey on certain yeah, things? Yeah, That's because yeah, yeah. I'm a man. Right. And, mm, but and, not all men do that. We don't want to, we don't, session. with all due respect, seriously, to all the women that you've encountered. Ladies, I'm saying this. The reason why it's worked for you is because you have chosen 
and to prey on low functioning women who don't have the emotional intelligence. No, I'm going there. Who will allow you to do that, Nick? And when I say allow, it's not a control thing. When I say allow, I'm not saying that she sits across you and says, this is what you won't do. You're crossing a boundary. Nick. I disagree. Session. With all due respect, seriously, to all the women. What is he disagreeing with? He has said it time and time again that the women that he gets with, they allow him to be with other women. But guess what? They're not allowed to have side dick. Okay, so he can have all the side chicks he wants. He can smash between these women, give them BV. Remember, he was saying that they're coochie stink about a year or two ago. That, you know, he's tired of them having funky boxes. Well, they're coochie stinks because you're raw dogging each of these women and you're you're messing up their their uh their bacteria in their coochies, okay? So he's giving them BV, leaving them with funky coochies, but guess what? They're not allowed to get no side dick. They're not allowed to fuck other men. So how is he not being controlling? How is he not fucking with low functional, low vibrational women? Because a woman who has high standards for herself, who knows her worth, is not going to allow a guy to use her as a cum, as a cum dumpster, okay? You're not just going to be skeeting in me and then moving on and skeeting, to the, skeeting on the next chick, okay? Okay, getting her pregnant, but then if I want to do me, it's an issue. That is very low functional. So she's not telling any lies in this conversation. I, I don't know if it's the Libra in me, if it's my abandonment issues as a child. I'm quick to be like, we agree to disagree, so I'm out. Mm -hmm. I'll run, I'll, I'll detach, I'll, act like, you know, I'll shut down. Okay. Now, y'all know I'm, I'm all about the Zodiacs, but what we're not going to do is use your Zodiac as an excuse. The reason why you can detach and run is because of your status in society. It has nothing to do with you being a Libra. It is because of your status. If you were Nick Cannon, the fry cook at Bojangles, they would detach and run from you quick, fast, and in a hurry. But because of your status and who you are and your money, it's easy for you to run and say, next, bring the next chick on. Oh, you don't like this lifestyle? You don't like what I'm doing here? You don't like the fact that I'm fucking, you know, you, 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 and you? Then I'm out. I'm going to move on. That is because of your status. If you did not have wealth, power, and status, half these women wouldn't check for you, let alone allow you to treat them the way that you treat them. And again, I can't even be mad at him for having that demeanor. It's also on the women. I don't care how pretty these women are because all his baby mothers are beautiful. They're all gorgeous, but their self-esteem is in the gutter and they can't tell me otherwise. I don't care how light their eyes are, how straight their hair is, their self-esteem is in the gutter. The fact that half of y'all were pregnant at the same time tells me everything I need to know. I internalize, uh, and I know that's not healthy, but just as, as a man to stay away from conflict with, uh, any woman in my life, I'll just be like, we agree to disagree. Yeah. You can have that. I, I don't know if it's the Libra in me. All right. <laughs> Look at Cam Newton's face. When I tell you she was reading these dudes, checking them with the truth. But in a real way, she wasn't being ghetto. She wasn't being hood. She wasn't being disrespectful. She was having real conversations and neither Nick or Cam Newton could handle that. And Cam Newton was getting very, very offended. So now what we're going to do is watch the interview with her and Cam. Hopefully this doesn't echo, um, but you know, let me know if it does. But she was just so professional in her approach. Um, like I said, I've been saying this for years about Nick and men like Nick. And the reason why they get away with it is because of their status. And not even so much the celebrity thing, but it's money. Because think about a lot of the guys in the hood who have the most kids by different women tend to be the dope boys. You know what I'm saying? The drug dealers, the dudes who are doing, you know, a lot of nefarious shit to get money in cars. Because a lot of women chase wealth and they chase, you know, money and things like that. Then they find themselves in the situation where the, they're the third, fourth, and fifth baby mama. You know what I mean? Um, because a lot of guys who don't have money or, you know, popularity, they don't have access to a lot of cooch. So they're not out here impregnating everybody. And that's just the fact of the matter. So you got men with money and gold diggers who are attracted to that. So this Cam Newton interview was very interesting. I took some timestamps because there's some things that I peeped that I want to address as well. So let's 
Let's see where we can start with this mess of an interview here. Okay. And this one, he's trying to clock her tea, but I really want to get to his first. Okay. I'm going to play some of this video, and then I'm probably going to have to click on another video where my timestamps are at. Let me know if you guys can hear this and if it's not, um, you know, echoing. So let me know if it echoes. Uh, high function. What situation? See, my situation, that's a very vague question in this for you. What so situation been... are you referring to that they're looking at and thinking is not high function? Just my life. Okay, is it echoing or are we good? Okay, we're good. Oh, okay, I get maybe they changed it up, child. We ain't gotta mute ourselves no more. Okay, StreamYard. Mm, okay. All right, let's continue. Your your life entirely or your life in my relationship? My life, my life, my life. See, don't deflect. Let's stay here. Your life entirely or your life in relationship? Uh both really. And they think that you're low functioning. No, I don't. You just said people see your life and think you're not high functioning. The opposite of that would be low functioning. No, no, no. Okay, so here you go. You're trying to take my intentions no, no, no. away from this is can I can I correct it? Yeah, go ahead. Or can I give you more, yeah, uh, more information? Thank you. So look how he's getting so defensive, but these are the words that came out of his mouth that people don't see him as high functioning. But he's quick to get defensive. I'm not married. Mm. Right? I have beautiful children. How many? Eight. I, was, I thought I, I didn't do my research. I thought it was four, but eight. Okay. No, baby. Cool. It's, it's By eight. how many women? Three. And this is the kicker. I want more. Now. By multiple women? What's the intent? I just want God by to your bring wife? I just want God to bring him. Oh, okay. And you have, so you just. Because my point is this. My desire to get married mm -hmm. is lower than my fear of divorce. So. As you had said, Dr. Bryant, you said it, I didn't say it, I will agree. I'm just taking my time. Drinking and driving is a... Okay, anyways, with this weird-ass commercial, let me get on to the... Let me, let me say this first. So that was their topic where they were talking about how he has eight kids. Like I said, I didn't realize he had that many. I know he had just recently had another baby with this girl who's a comedian. I'd never heard of her until he knocked her up. Um, his whole situation is a mess. Let me, okay, let me go on to the other clips I have here. Let me go, let's pull up my timestamps. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna watch it from here. Thank you. So, I'm not married, right? I have beautiful children. How many? Eight. I, was, I thought I, I didn't do my research. I thought it was four, but eight. Okay. No, baby. Cool. It's, it's By how eight. many women? Three. And this is the kicker. I want more. Now. By multiple women? What's the intent? I just want God by your wife. Him. I just want God to bring him. Oh, okay. And you have, so you just. Because my point is this. My desire to get married mm -hmm. is lower than my fear of divorce. So. As you had said, Dr. Bryant, you said it, I didn't say it, I will agree. I'm just taking my time. You're not taking your time. I am, though. You're being very action-based. You're not taking your time. You're being very action-based. I'm taking my time. You're being very action-based. You have eight kids yeah. with three different women. Yes. You are creating, procreating, and multiplying. That is not taking your time. You're being very selectively active. Mm. Okay? So you're creating, mm -hmm. in disclaimer, the kids are innocent. They are beautiful and amazing. Anything I say has nothing to do with them babies because I, I can't wait to be a mom and I love, 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 love the kids, period. Um, but you are proactively choosing where you want to be active at and where you want to take your time. Mm -hmm. You want to take your time in having a wife because of your own fears. But you will, and I say this with all respect and love, what I'm about to say next, okay, Cam? But you will selfishly create broken families, even if you're in their life and you're a proactive father and I believe you're an amazing daddy. I can only imagine with just your presence and, and knowing you thus far, but these families are still broken. Every child cannot have Papa in the house with them. So some child, if not all, 
all, we'll end up with some kind of deficit without daddy being there. Mm -hmm. Now, you chose to do that. I'm not saying you sat there and woke up one morning and said, I want to be selfish today, so I'm going to go make a baby. Not saying that at all. But those are selfish acts at the expense of your fear. So at what point do you feel the fear? Do it anyways. And yeah, that is a low functioning behavior to say that I am going to create these homes. Oh, let me go better. I'm going to build these houses and put kids and these beautiful women and kids in them, but I ain't going to create a home in them. I'm going to wait till I dissipate my fear to find a wife where I'm still going to be fearful with because there's no such thing as not having some type of nerve or some type of feeling behind marrying somebody who you're spending your life with. And then I'm going to build a home with her while all these other beautiful babies have houses. That's completely unfair and it's selfish. Just tell me more like a song. Yeah, almost. That's completely unfair and that's selfish. And so, yes, you're taking your time in this department, but you're not taking your time in this department, which means you're compartmentalizing. And compartmentalizing never works. Compartmentalizing hurts everybody involved. Everybody who's in this box and that box and this box and that box and this box. And then here you go over here trying to figure out what box you're going to feed or entertain or do. Then you're looking outside to figure out who's your next victim to put in the box. It's unhealthy. Mm. Mm. And you can tell he is not liking the conversation. He's not liking where it's going um, because he feels like just because he has money, that means something. Again, you can have all the money in the world. Even, and then we found out later on in the conversation that supposedly all eight children live with him. Personally, I don't believe it. I, I just don't believe that all eight live with him. But okay, let's just say that all eight children live with him that it's still hard to give eight individual children attention, love, everything they need as one parent. It's hard when women do it. You know what I'm saying? that. Why do you think some people get upset when they see these large families on social media? You know, me and my family of 10 kids. It's like at, at some point in time, somebody's not gonna get enough attention. There's only two parents, if you're lucky, in the household. Not saying that you can't have that many if you're married, but that is a lot of children. And a lot of times you're not, you can't give that many kids your attention at one time. You know, so for him to have eight children, that is a lot. I don't believe person that they all live with him. I think he's just saying that. They may all live with him on the weekends. I do not believe that they all live with him full time, Monday through Friday. I, I just don't believe it. Um, but she she made some really good points that it's funny that you're too scared to get married and, and have a wife, but you're still wanting children. Now, he just had a baby not even a few months ago. He made no mention about wifing that chick up while she's on a hobo tour being a proud baby mama, you know, being the proud third baby mama. But he's made no mentioning of marrying her. So what is going on in this relationship? You just had a brand new baby and you're not even talking about having more kids with this lady that just birthed a child not even a few months ago. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. Somebody said, it's hard for me and I had three children all five years apart and I still had to be a wife. It's hard as hell. Lord, I'm tired. Exactly. I have two and my kids are four years apart and that took a lot. You know what I'm saying? Raising two. Because they're, they're two totally different kids, different personalities, different friend group, different ages. I couldn't imagine having eight children. That is a lot of kids, especially by different people in different households. So I don't care how he or Nick Cannon tries to spin it. it it's not cute. It's not cute. And it's the children that suffer when it's said and done. So let me fast forward a bit. <coughs> Let me see here. He gets very offended easily too. I just, I found that just ironic. Okay, think about this part here. Come back on the screen. Visions. So this is why I'm saying the household baby is still broken, but it doesn't mean your kids have to be. But it's about coming into awareness of what really is. And like my father knew he had blended families broken homes but he tried to overcompensate and he did in every way he could by being a daddy so that's all i'm saying is we can label it what we want mm -hmm. but the reality is this is what a blended family looks like mm -hmm. unless you're telling me it's polyamorous and you're not this is what a broken household looks like now let me go further do broken households broken households make for good people 
You damn right. I'm not a statistic. I ain't perfect. I work through my stuff. I come from the inner city of the hood. I'm a product of teenage parents, a dope dealer and an addict who is now sober and killing it. My mom is a VP of my company, runs everything, got her own business, and I'm a doctor. So people like me come from situations like that. So I'm always advocate for it, but I'm always keep it real about what it is. Because in order for us to take it and heal it and do something with it, we got to call a damn duck a duck so we know where to put it, what to feed it, how to do it, and what it needs. We can't be in this society as black people and want to give things different words so that it makes us feel better about our decision. The decision is made. You see how uncomfortable he's getting? You know, any other time them legs is crossed, them damn balls hurt, them legs be crossed so tight. Oh, them legs is wide open now. He's scratching his, his mustache. He definitely feels a way. He feels agitated, you know, and she's speaking a lot of truth. And what I also hate, unfortunately, is that she had to compliment him because it's like his ego was so bruised that she still had to be like, oh, but I know you're a good father and I know that you're doing the best that you can do. And I too come from a broken home because he can't take it. That she still has to compliment him to soothe his ego. And that's sad. This is a grown man. These are decisions that he made. She's not lying about anything. You, you can call it what you want to call it, but it's still a broken home. It's still a blended family. It's still a parent not being in the household. I don't like the word single mother. People who know me know I hate that word. But that doesn't change the fact that I'm a single mother. I'm not going to remix and be like, I'm superwoman. No, 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 I'm, I'm a single mother. And I've had to raise two boys on my own. As much as I hate that word, it just, it is what it is. You have created broken homes. It may not, it may be hard to swallow, Cam, but that's the truth of the matter. And no matter how you try to clean it up and say, oh, they live with you or, or you know what I'm saying, I'm there for my kids. My, my baby mothers can never say that they're single mothers because I, you know, I, I give them child support. I pay for private school. They're still growing up in a broken home because neither mother or father are raising them at the same time. Regardless, if you have all eight, all eight children have three, there's three different baby mamas. You're not with them. So meaning that you are creating a broken home. She's not speaking French. She's speaking perfect English to me. So I just don't like when people try to like, try to remix things. Reality is reality. No matter how much it hurts our ego or we get upset, reality is reality. It is a broken home. It is a blended family. And now what are we gonna do with these beautiful babies? So that your son, you got, you got boys? I'm guessing out of eight, you got to have some boys. So that your boys make different and better decisions than daddy did. Not that you didn't do the best of what you had, but so your boys can say, daddy, I admire you, but I did it different. Daddy, thank you for not letting me be fatherless, but I did it different. Your daughter can say, daddy, I only married him and got all five kids with just one because two things, you was in my life and because I didn't have to choose from despair. And you see how she has to still coddle him and coddle his ego? Because look look at his mouth. Oh, he's tight-lipped. He doesn't want to make eye contact. Oh, but when he's running the show, you can't tell Cam nothing. Look how he's looking like a, like a little boy. He's all slouched in his chair, lip poking out. And she has to coddle him in order to spoon feed him the truth. And this is a father of eight. Insane. And because I love you, but I didn't want to have three or four or five kids by multiple men. So I chose different than you. But watch this. But he has these similarities about you that I love. He's loving. He won't leave me hanging. He's stable. He got my back. Because that's what I love about you. But your choices is what I didn't choose in this man. And that's okay. I don't choose my father and men who have the multiple kids, but I choose my daddy and men who are solid, and who got my back, and who love me unconditionally, and who dote on me, and still treat me like his baby at 41. That's all I'm saying. So you're doing a hell of a job, thank you. But the situation is what it is, it's the reality. <laughs> She's of still complimenting him, and he's so in his feelings, he can't even respond. <laughs> he can't even respond back. She's like, you're doing a hell of a job, he's like, don't cry, bro. Like, it's okay. Shit. You, 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 you wouldn't cry when you was making all these kids. 
What in the world? Okay. I can talk. Yes. Okay. Whew. Now, we gonna press the space bar with that mm -hmm. real quick, and we have to get to our game. So mm -hmm. now, catch this shade. I don't think a lot of y'all caught this shade, and I'm gonna address this. Game? Oh, you don't play games. I do. I, oh, mean, okay. I love games. I'm uh, excited. I'm excited. I'm pretty sure 26 don't come with a lot of games. Yeah, lot but of needless games. to say. All right. Did y'all peep that? Let me come back on the screen. He says, I'm pretty sure 26 gonna come with a lot of games. Okay. This, this is the real tea. What it is, is that what I get from, from Dr. Cheyenne, she gives me the same vibes as Ebony K. Williams. She is a preference of Cam Newton. She's pretty. Okay, just like Ebony K. Williams. Remember, beautiful woman. And Ilyana Van Zandt tried to get her to date a bus driver. And Ebony said, bitch, I'm a lawyer. I will not date a bus driver. I will not date down. You're old ass Ken, but I'm not, okay? And people got mad they drug Ebony. And the reason why they were so upset is because Ebony is their preference. The reason why Cam Newton is in his feelings is because this doctor is beautiful. She is his preference. So how dare you, as a 41-year-old, single woman with no children, say that you wouldn't date someone like me, even though I have eight children, I'm rich. I'm a football player. I'm decorated. I'm a catch. But see, the problem is she has herself together. She's not impressed with that. She has her own standards. I will not date a man who has children and she has the right to have that standard. I said this time and time again on my channel. I do not, I feel like people who do not have children need to date each other. If you don't have any children, you should not be trying to play stepmama to somebody who got five kids by five different women. Fuck that. Just like if you're a man, a man has the right to choose. If he does not have any children, he shouldn't want to date a single mother with three kids. Why should he want to take on that responsibility? If he wanted three children, he could have his own. I've always said that. I feel like people who do not have children need to get with each other, raise children together. Now, if you choose to be with a single mother or single father, that's on you. We don't want to hear no crying. Don't, don't put us in the group chat. But there's nothing wrong with the woman. She has no children. So why is he offended that she doesn't, she sees him as a liability. She doesn't want the headache of a bunch of baby mamas, a bunch of, you know, kids running around. I wouldn't want that if I was single with no children. You have the right to your standard. Just like I tell people all the time and people are like, oh, well, you're a single mom. You have two kids. How do you have a standard? Bitch, I, I very much have a standard. Yes, I have two kids. Both my kids are by my ex-husband. I'm not dating a guy who got three, four, and five kids, four and five baby mamas. I'm not bringing two, three, four baby mamas to the table. So if you're, I mean, baby daddy, excuse me. I'm not bringing three and four baby daddies to the table. I have an ex-husband. So I prefer a guy, if he's going to have children, you have one baby's mother, preferably your ex-wife. But if y'all didn't make it down the aisle, whatever. But I prefer a man who has children with the same woman. And that is something I ask guys right off the rip. So when I hear it, when a guy is like, oh, well, I got five kids. Are they all by the same woman? No, I got three baby mamas. I'm not interested. Well, how are you not going to be interested in you got two kids? Yeah, both my kids are by my ex-husband. I'm not dealing with a bunch of baby mamas. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I don't even like dealing with exes, let alone a bunch of baby mamas. So again, just because we have children does not mean as a single mother you can't have your own standards or as a single father. If your children were by your ex-wife and you have three kids by your ex-wife and you don't want to deal with a woman who has three kids by three different men, that is your standard. Nobody has the right to shame you about that. So I'm very confused as to why she's being shamed because she does not want a man with children. And people are saying, well, she's old. She should just, you know, accept that most guys her age are going to have children. Exactly. Most guys in their 40s will have children. That's why she's willing to date younger. That's another thing that's bothering Cam Newton because I thought at this point in time, Cam Newton was like 42 years old. I had to Google his age. Cam Newton is 35. 35 with eight children. That is insane, okay? So her being 41, 
she's saying that she's willing to date younger because she knows most younger guys, she's willing to go down to 26, nothing wrong with that. His, his frontal cortex is fully developed, okay? We, we, we love a, a fully developed cortex, okay? Y'all not like younger dudes too, so there's nothing wrong with that. But she's saying that she's willing to date younger because she knows a younger guy is not going to come with a bunch of baggage. Most likely he's not going to have a bunch of kids. If he does have kids, most likely he'll probably only have one baby mama. Okay, whereas when you get up there, yes, Cam Newton is 35. I was shocked. I really thought he was like 42 years old. He is 35. But do you notice his comment? Um, you like him 26. They're going to come with a bunch of games. See, people don't like when you have, people do not like to see older women who are still bad as hell. Because she's, she's bad. Because she's cute. Titties is perky. Pretty face. People do not like to see older women who are bad dating younger guys that bothers a lot of older guys' ego because again the narrative per kevin samuels and all these red pill weirdos is that once a woman gets to a certain age you should just throw her in the trash you know 40 and up oh she's worthless she's old but a lot of these young dudes are like no she's not she's mature she's not playing these little kid games that a lot of these young girls play because a lot of younger dudes tend to go for older women so the fact that she's willing to date younger, that also bothered him because he wouldn't have made that comment if it didn't. She'd rather date somebody younger with no baggage than somebody older with a bunch of baggage. But now, who also talks like that? Men. How many men, not all, but how many men say that they want to date younger women? Why? Because they don't come with a bunch of baggage. They don't have a bunch of baby daddies. They can still be molded and all the shit that they say. So why is it an issue when an older woman says the same thing? She's not saying anything different than what a lot of these older guys say. When they sit up here and say, well, I want you to, 18 is legal, so it don't matter. Okay, it is legal. Go have fun. But when she says she'd rather date somebody younger, it's an issue. But men say that all the time, that they'd rather date a younger woman because she's less bitter. She won't have a bunch of baby daddies. You know what I'm saying? She ain't been ran through and, you know, her womb is fresh. So she's saying the same thing. I don't want a bunch of old dusty sperm. I want a young man who has himself together, who's business oriented, who's mature. She says she's willing to date younger because she knows most younger guys are not going to have a bunch of baggage, a bunch of children. And so Cam Newton is Cam Newton is in his feelings because he no longer checks her box. See, she's supposed to be desperate like his baby mama. She's supposed to be happy to pull a football player. But the difference is this woman is educated. She has herself together. She brings something to the table. So she's not impressed by Cam Newton's fame or his money. But see, his last baby mama, she's nothing but a comedian. She sits online all day and jokes and, and coons and clowns. So for her, she's impressed and couldn't wait to be knocked up by a football player. See, that's the difference. Cam Newton is doing nothing but attracting a bunch of low functional women. His first baby mama was a stripper. So if he was raised in this Christian household with a mother and a father who've been married for 39 years, because he kept bragging about that during the interview, how did you end up with the stripper? And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking sex workers or anything like that. But so many men will sit here and talk down, right? <clears throat> about strippers, porn stars, you know, they're, they're, they're low class women, they're trash. They'll talk about escorts. You know, the porn stars are whore until it's two o'clock in the morning and their pen is hard and they need to get one off. Now you're on Pornhub. Now she's not a whore. Now she's doing you a favor. The OnlyFans model gets talked about like she's not shit, but somehow these women keep pulling these basketball and football players. Okay? So I find it very interesting that his first baby mama was a stripper, but you were raised in a Christian household. I'm sure your mom wasn't swinging on no pose. So it's very interesting that that's the type of woman, not knocking her her profession, but the way he talks, like he's so high value. See, a high-value man will play with a stripper, right? Take her out, buy her some nice things, you know, show off like arm candy. But a, a real high-value man, they're not going to make a stripper their baby mama. I'm just saying. Not until she gets out the game. Now, once she gets out the game and she's not doing that anymore, he may swing back around and wife her. But for the most part, a, a high-value man... 
men who have things to lose, they're, they're not consorting. They're not going to put themselves in a position to knock up a stripper. So while he's talking like he's a catch, <clears throat> we keep receipts. This man been beefing with all his baby mamas. So let's go back to 2020 when he played the stripper baby mama. And all his baby mamas look alike. So let me go back a bit. So remember in 2020, you know, Mr. High Value Man was blasted <clears throat> for cheating on the stripper baby mama. They had been together for some years. Let me share my screen here. Who remembers this? Cam Newton hiding a secret child. <clears throat> Insiders claim that the Carolina Panthers star quarterback Cam Newton and his longtime girlfriend and baby mama, okay, they've been together for years, never wiped her up, caught it quits after he secretly fathered a child behind her back. Cam and former DC stripper Kia Proctor quietly parted ways back in October after Cam had a baby with the Instagram model Lorania Shaw. Eagle Eye fans noticed that Cam and Kia were no longer following each other on social media. Kia has deleted all pictures of Cam from her page. Cam and Kia have three kids together. This is the IG model that Cam was playing the lady for. So he definitely has a type. And again, not knocking, you know, what they do for a living, but the way he talks that he's like he's so high value. But these are the women that he's knocking up. Okay? So she had a baby by him in 2020 or 2021. And then, <clears throat> let me pull up this other one here. Give me just a second. This is his latest baby mama, and she's a trip. Oh, hold on. There was a clapback he did when people was clowning him. Let's see here. Okay. He says some type of clap back. If I find it, I'll, I'll post it. But okay, so then, okay, before we even get to the, the newest babe mama, in 2023, him and the first babe mama, the stripper babe mama, they were beefing over a Bentley. Okay, this is the high value man. Cam Newton's ex <clears throat> refusing to give up Bentley. Four months ago, retired NFL quarterback Cam Newton filed a lawsuit against his baby mama, Kim Proctor, accusing her of refusing to return his Bentley Bentaga. Kim uh, Kia insists that the Bentley was a gift and she wants the lawsuit dismissed. They be for a good two years behind this Bentley, okay? But this is a high value man here. This is the new babe mama, Jasmine Brown, okay? So he recently knocked her up, and she's, like I said, I never heard of her until she got pregnant, but she's allegedly a comedian, and she took on, she went on the road to brag about being his third babe mama. So we're going to go ahead and watch her stand up. So y'all don't know, I'm the third one, and this is his sixth child. Someone said, ooh, that couldn't have been me. All right, so the rich nigga put that pressure on me. I could never, I could never do it in no one. Okay? And so the hundred million dollars needs to put the pressure on you. And he don't know what the fuck you do. Talking about because she don't know what it be. This is his babe mama. So this is why he's upset. Because, see, she's willing to bust it wide open just because of who he is and his money. They're just typical gold digger. And because Dr. Cheyenne Bryant, who looks very similar to this babe mama, she's not interested. She doesn't care about his money. She has her own. She's not going to settle for somebody with eight children. This woman was willing to be the third baby mama and deal with the man with five other children by two other women because she was chasing a bag. She's easily impressed. And that's the difference. That's why Cam was offended because this is his baby mama. This is who he doesn't want to wife up. He's willing to knock her up, but he's not willing to make her a wife. And that's the difference. 
So now, this was her talking about, you know, the motherhood. I'm so excited to be a mom and learn so much. I'm trying to find the one of, somebody clocked his tea. Let me see here. And he kind of got, he got upset. Okay, this was the tour that she went on. This, this was the flyer for her comedy show. Baby Mama 3, Jasmine Watch, Jazzy Brown, Third Times a, t uh, a Charm tour. So her using the pregnancy of Cam Newton as a way to promote her comedy tour. This is ghetto and ratchet and very low functional, okay? Nothing cute about this. I said, we keep receipts. So now somebody went into his comment section and basically called him out. And he was in his feelings. So this person says, once you become a baby mama, the third, you know you can't give no more relationship advice, right? So Cam Newton replies back, and I don't even know why he writes like this, but I don't know what font this is. But he says, once you say some shit like this, you become a hater forever. I hate that for you, babes. We lovers over here. Keep that hate and shit to yourself. Love. So that was his response to a hater. So that's why he was very upset by what Dr. Bryant was saying. Because he knows that's, that's his baby mama right there. A girl who goes on a tour to brag about being the third baby mama. As opposed to Dr. Bryant, who can actually brag about her real accolades. Having a degree. Having herself together. Not having a bunch of babies out of wedlock. So now, this was also her after she had the baby. So compare this woman to Miss Bryant. This is Cam Newton's baby mama. This was after she gave birth. She's showing off, I guess, some type of maternity diaper. I don't know where these diapers came. They, they must be new because I don't remember maternity diapers, but whatever. Really love these shorts I got from the hospital. Um, if they're nice and high waisted because my diaper is high as hell. How long we gotta wear this diaper for? No, seriously, real question. How long do we have to wear this diaper? This is annoying. I wanna wear a thong. You don't want me to wear a thong? You want me to wear a diaper because you have on a diaper? Okay, we'll be diaper twins. Okay, I won't wear a thong. I'll wear a diaper. Who talks to their brand newborn like that about wearing a thong? It's just weird. It's just it's just weird. That's your conversation with your newborn, maybe in public, on social media. So that's why he's in his feelings. This is this is his babe mama, the third one that just had his most recent child. Diaper. You don't want mommy in a thong. I get it. My baby don't want me to wear no thong, so I'm not finna wear no thong. And that's on period. Okay, gotta go. The baby is like, shut the fuck up and come feed me. Like, what, what the hell is this? <laughs> so again. Hello. Uh-oh, not Gigi popping up. Uh-uh. Miss Gigi. Um, so again, that that is Cam Newton's third baby mama. And he got the nerve to fill away because Dr. Brian is not interested in that. You come with a lot of chaos. Your baby mama's come with a lot of chaos. She's not interested. So now she was on the shade room. I saw this right before I came live. She was on the shade room talking about how she serves her man. Okay, girl, here she goes. So we're gonna watch what she has to say. Give me a second here. So this is Cam Newton, baby mama child. It's done. I'm going to put my baby to sleep. Um, I don't know about y'all. I don't know what brings you guys joy, but it really brings me joy to serve. I love being a servant. I love to serve. I. It just brings me joy. I love it. I love serving. I, I, I love it. I love it. I don't give a damn. I'll be up at 6 o'clock, 5.30 in the morning, cooking breakfast, serving. I just love that. I love it. Yeah. It's like 
just gives me purpose. And now with the new baby, now I just feel even more purposeful, especially like when I breastfeed, I feel so full of life. I love it. I love it. Right, come on, baby. It's, now that everything is done, I'm gonna put my baby to sleep. Um, I don't know about y'all. I don't know what brings you guys joy, but it really brings me bad all So you. the thing that my children have taught me is unlocking emotions. And also, it's just not my children. It's my partner now. And she does an amazing job with identifying that. It's like, tell your daughter, like, I'm making you better for your daughter. You doing what? Trust me, baby. It ain't no uh 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 uh. Calm down. We not we not yelling. I'm not yelling, baby. But I'm just I just want you to feel me. Feel me. Yes. She, Kuda needs you. Kiri needs you. Tweet needs you. Like these things is where it's a place of refuge, mm -hmm. not a place of war. Right. So as I'm living, I'm not afraid to say, bro, I cry. Man, my sons make me proud. Always, so yeah. the thing that my children have taught me okay anyways let me... <laughs> people are all, people are all de degenerates um so you know she's up there i love to serve it's taco tuesday i love to serve go ahead and serve my man serve this breast milk i just serve 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 you know oh and she's a real one because she makes me you know want to take care of my daughters more but i never once heard in their conversation that he wants to wife her I never heard her in her conversation of being a servant, you know what I'm saying, saying that, you know, they're going to get married eventually. My thing is, I'm not going to sit here and serve, serve, serve a baby daddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're giving him all of the wifely benefits without any of the wife benefits. Because, again, he can leave tomorrow. He's literally talking on his show that he, has, that he wants more children. He didn't say he wanted more children by her. He just said, I just want the Lord to just bless me with children. Yes, you know, children falling from the sky like manna. So he can leave her at any time. That's why she has to serve and be a servant. Because she doesn't want her, her, her bag to get up and disappear. That's why a lot of these women put themselves in these positions. Just like, you know, uh, Carisha's big head ass. That's why she was in the situation that she was in with Diddy. Serving him, acting like a wife. Only for him to just, when, you know, she says that she left him, whatever. Either way, that relationship is done. But look how much of a clown she made herself. He had babies on her and everything. While she's holding up the, hey, poppy sign and, hey, you know, poppy, 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 he done knocked up somebody else. He thanked everybody at BT, but his main chick that he was with currently. But again, these women feel the need to have to go above and beyond because they know where the money resides. But a woman who has her own life and her own stuff and her own bag and has herself together, she doesn't have to put up with the bullshit. And that is what men like Cam Newton and Nick Cannon do not like. They want just basic chicks. They want a beautiful woman who really brings nothing to the table besides pussy and problems. That's all he's had. He literally was in a lawsuit over a Bentley. That's not peace. If she had her own, she'd be able to give him back the Bentley and go get her own. But if she was a wife, she could have got half legally. So that's why he doesn't want to marry these people. He wants to keep his money to himself and that's fine. But he doesn't want to marry him because he knows that he can't see himself being faithful or being tied down to one woman. And if it ends up in divorce, he's going to lose half. So he wants to play the field forever. And that's cool. But stop making all these babies while you're playing the field. You can play the field and you can get all the cooch you want without creating constant, broken, single family homes. So I, I really like this lady. I really like the things that she was saying. She was keeping it real um, all the way. Somebody said Portia Williams. Yep, she's another one. You know, willing to like look the other way and do all types of nonsense for the bag. And then when it blows up in their face and they want to come crying back to social media. Now, I don't have a shoulder you can lean and cry on. I personally don't care. That's on you. So while this lady's trying to make it sound like everything's cool and everything's sweet, um, it's not because she wouldn't even have to reply back. 
she's trying to reply back to the doctor and act like she has one up on the doctor. But to me, I think the doctor is in a way better position. She's not dealing with a bunch of baggage and a bunch of nonsense. And, you know, most people say, well, she's 41. Why is she single? Why doesn't she have a man? She said she's been in relationships before. She didn't bash any of the previous relationships she was in. She said that she wasn't where she needed to be in life. She wasn't emotionally mature. But she feels like when she does get into another relationship, she'll definitely be ready and she'll know what to bring to the table. But to me, I can respect that. At least she's not on baby daddy number three. At least she recognizes that she wasn't ready to be in those relationships. So I think, like I said, um, I think this is like another case of like the Ebony K. Williams situation where, you know, men got upset with her because she's their preference and a lot of these guys were not on her level financially. So they knew that they would not be able to have a shot at her. So hence why they were upset. You know, so much so DJ Envy was talking about real estate. Then we find out all he's doing is scamming in real estate, allegedly. So the whole thing is just really, really interesting. But um, I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good interview. Um, I like the fact that she held him accountable. She wasn't playing. So let me go ahead and read some of these super chats. I've been on here for an hour already. Uh, let's see here. Khadija says, you look beautiful, T. Wishing you a lovely evening. Thank you so much, Khadija. Um, Seed of Tim sent 999 says, D. Dorico's is a great example of a married couple with 13 plus children and not being there for all of them. I don't even know who the Dorico's are. To be honest, I just, let me Google child. I don't, I'm not in, people think I be playing when I say I don't watch family vlogs, people who got a bunch of damn kids. I just, I'm not interested. I think it's, I think it's all for TV and social media. I think people are having a lot of these babies for clout, for um, gifts, for sponsorships. I just don't entertain it. So what happened? Oh, doubling down with the Dericos. So what happened 24 hours ago? The Dierico Dean shares health update. What the hell? What's wrong with the mama? I, I just don't care enough. Did they break up or something? How many kids they got? I can't even count. I don't know. How, how many kids is this? There's All I see is a bunch of little faces. How many kids is this? All I see is just a bunch of faces. Child, let me click on this article. Is this the dad? She stopped chemotherapy. <clears throat> oh, Dion's mom. His mom had cancer, okay. So I I'm guess I'm confused. What is the tea with them? They don't, they don't deal with their kids or something? It's a lot of kids to not be dealing with. Like, I don't, I don't watch them. They have 14. Oh, my God. Okay. They're 13 plus. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm not into family channels, people with large families. Um, not in, like, if you have a large family in real life, I can respect it because you're not trying to, um, you know, take advantage and, you know, looking for social media clout. It's the ones I see on social media. I just, I don't buy any of it. Oh, they're divorcing. With 14 kids? Oh, hell no. Ain't no divorce. Not with 14. Just like with John and Kate plus eight, ain't no divorce. And where are these kids supposed to go? So one gets seven and the other gets seven? This is just, this is insane. They're getting divorced. I'm glad I don't know nothing about them. Let me move on. Thank you for the super chat. <laughs> Ain't no way. 14 kill? Oh, hell no. That's crazy. Imagine being a single mother of 14. And, yeah, and that's another thing that I find very interesting is that Cam Newton thinks he's a prize because he has money and eight children. Right? But let's switch the genders. If this was a woman who had money and eight children, no man would consider her high value. Because last time I checked, uh, Kiki Wyatt, she has about, I don't know, child, maybe 13 kids at this point. 
She also has money. She's a singer and everything now. She has a bunch of baby daddies. I've never heard not one man give her props. Say, well, at least she can take care of all of them. She got money. Everybody calls her a hood rat. They say her womb is used up. Her coochie's wider than a hallway. I've seen so many derogatory things written about Kiki because she has all these kids. But Cam Newton wants to be seen as a prize. Nick Cannon wants to be seen as a prize. But when it's a woman with a whole bunch of kids, it's not seen as a prize. Would Cam Newton himself date a woman who came to the table with, th with uh, three baby daddies and eight kids? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Because all of his other children, those mothers didn't have kids before Cam Newton. So he's not even going after the type of women that he has. They'd be like me with two kids right now saying, oh, I don't date men with kids. I only want men with no kids. What kind of bullshit is that? I'm not going to date men with a whole bunch of kids. But I, I try not to date men who have more than three children. As long as you have kids by the same woman. So he would not date a woman with eight kids by three baby daddies. I just know he wouldn't. Why would he? When he has women who don't have any kids who are willing to line up and have a baby with him just because he's Cam Newton. Just like with Nick Cannon. Most of his baby mamas, they didn't have kids before Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon was their first and only baby daddy. So it's very interesting when the genders are reversed, a man, even if he has money or no money, is not willing to date a woman with a bunch of kids with different baby daddies. She's seen as spoiled goods. But a woman is supposed to accept a man and his tribe of 14. I think the fuck not. Okay? I don't care if all 14 kids are by that woman. I'm not dating a guy with 14 children. You and your wife need to work it out, go to counseling, leave me the hell alone. It's insane. Yeah, Joey Chavez. Thank you. She's another good one. They go in on her all the time. Or Joy. I think her name is Joy. Bawa Babe Mama, Future Babe Mama. She just had another baby the other day by a football player. I think Trevor. They going on her all the time. Look how many men still drag Sierra. Sierra actually learned from her mistake. She had a baby with Future. She was Babe Mama number four or something like that. People drug her as they should have. You're Sierra, you didn't have any children. Why would you line up to be the fourth baby mama and think that you were going to get a different man because you were Sierra? She found out she got the same man as all the other baby mamas. But the difference is Sierra learned her lesson. She's not out here with four or five kids by four or five different men. She learned her lesson with Future, got with Russell, and all her children have been with Russell ever since. And he's a good father. Look how many men clown Russell. They drag him. They say he's a simp. Why would he settle for Sierra? She already had a kid. He took a woman on who had one child and people still drag them to this day. But Cam Newton is offended because this doctor doesn't want to be saddled down with his eight children. It's insane. It, it just does not make any sense. So a woman with one child is seen as damaged goods. But a man with, you know, 12 children, Nick Cannon, by all these women, it's okay. Well, he got the money. Who cares? Sierra, Sierra's not broke. She has the money to take care of a little future with or without Russell. And she still gets drugged to this day. It's insane. She, her and Russell get drugged more than future. And he's the one out here creating the broken homes. It makes no sense. And then there was even something that she was saying about, um, you know, giving props to people who don't make those type of mistakes. Like, we're not calling the babies mistakes, but we're saying the situation, how they were born, the different baby mamas. Like, you know, she was basically saying, like, you know, we have the right to give props to people who didn't make those particular life decisions. And it's sad that we'd rather demonize people like that and be like, well, you're 41 and you have no kids. What's wrong with you? Remember when that, 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 uh, that, uh, the idiot Carisha was clowning women who didn't have kids by the time they were 30. And it's like, you dummy, isn't your bandmate, JT, isn't she childless? Because she was saying, if you don't have kids by the time you're 30, you got some bad pussy. And I'm like, 
Bitch, do you not know how to read the room? Your own city girl member don't have no kids. You think that if JT didn't want to have a baby right now by rich Uzi Vert, she couldn't have a child by Uzi? I think she could. But she's choosing not to just be a random baby mama. While Carisha's up here with two kids by two different men. And still stuck on bisexual Diddy. So I, I just think it's really sad. And I think that we do have to start giving props to people who make decent decisions and stop shaming them. Cam is acting like, oh, well, life is just lifing. Well, yeah, life lifes, right? But once you get to a certain age, when does life stop lifing? Like I get if you're a teenage parent and you know, you have your first child young, you learn from your baby daddy, your baby mama, we get it. Cam Newton is a 35 year old man and his baby's mama, his, his most recent one is on tour, proud to be a third baby mama. That's not life lifing. Let's give props to men like LeBron James, who has all his children by Savannah. Let's give props to men like Steph Curry, who has all his children by his wife, Aisha Curry. Uh, Russell Westbrook, he's married, he has children. I, Damon, uh, uh, Draymond Green, married, has children. So it's not just life lifing. You have a lot of entertainers and celebrities who are doing the right thing. But they don't get props. It's the NBA Young Boys. It's the Nick Cannons. That is very low functional and low vibrational. And I'm glad that she caught that out. That should not be the norm in society. Just out here being a rolling stone, all wishy-washy with the sperm. That's disgusting. No different than a woman out here just popping out baby after baby by random men. It's all, it's all trifling. You don't get a pass because you're a man. If it's trifling for a woman to be out here with three and four baby daddies, it's just as trifling for a man to be out here with three and four baby mamas. Ain't nothing cute about that. Both of you guys are creating number broken homes. And then y'all expect other people who are not in similar situations to come up and clean up y'all's mess and play step daddy, play step mama. Absolutely not. Make better decisions. Yeah, it, it really is. It's the kids that end up suffering in the long run. So don't let people shame you because you don't have kids. Don't let people shame you that if you do have kids and you have standards, don't allow people to shame you. If you have one child, you have the right to say, I will not date a man with more than one child. Don't let somebody feel like, you know, you have to date somebody who got 10 kids by five different women. Absolutely not. He needs to go find somebody who has 10 children by five different men. So that way they can be equally yoked together. So, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous that people try and shame people. If you feel the need to be married first before having children, that is your right. Don't let anybody shame you about that. Don't let people be like, oh, you're old. You need to just settle. Ain't nobody about to be married, no 41-year-old with no kids. Well, no, you won't just because you messed up your life and got 15 kids and a bunch of child support and, you know, getting sued. That's on you. Don't project your weird insecurities and, you know, your downtrodden life onto me. Okay, don't let people project their nonsense onto you because that's really what it is. They're projecting. They're mad because now they're at the bottom of the barrel. They're having to scrape the bottom of the barrel because a lot of women who have themselves together, they don't care if you're Cam Newton or Nick Cannon. They're not interested. Especially if they have themselves together. The women who are interested in being in those situations are women who don't have shit besides looks and coochie. They have nothing else going for themselves. Hence why they sit on social media all day, beefing and clapping back, sitting in the shade room, crying in the comment section. Because women who are high value, who have themselves together, who have things going on, they're not out here getting impregnated by random guys. They're not out here getting impregnated for a bag. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely TV Show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely TV Show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.